Hello trumpet enthusiasts and early music nerds. Today we're going to have a little journey into the history of double and triple tonguing on the trumpet. Most trumpet players encounter those techniques the first time when they start to study the Arben method for the cornet. So let's start with Arben. Here we are in the tonguing section of the Goldman edition, which was published in 1893. First chapter is about triple tonguing. Second chapter about the double tongue. Followed by a chapter where slurring and tonguing is combined. But wait, there's another chapter. Tonguing as applied on the trumpet. That is strange. Why is there another chapter about trumpet tonguing which is just using the same syllables like triple tonguing? Since our key word here is trumpet and Arben was mainly known as a cornet player, let's look at Arben's teacher, François Georges Auguste Dauvernay. In 1857 he actually published a method about trumpet playing. Méthode pour la trompette. In this method, we find the chapter Les doubles coups de langue. So a translation could be the double striking tongue, or more simple, double tongue. Reading the first sentence of the descriptive text gives us the answer to our question. Les doubles coups de langue, vulgairement appelés coups de langue de trompette. So double tongue means basically tongue of the trumpet. Then Dauvernay gives three examples. Première articulation, tu -tu -tu -tu. deuxième articulation, tu -tu 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 -tu. troisième articulation, tu -tu 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 -tu. Interestingly, he always uses what Arben would refer to as triple tonguing. On the following page we find Sonnerie de l'ordonnance de trompette à l'usage de la cavalerie française, dans lesquelles les doubles coups de langue sont mis en pratique. So we find signals of the French cavalry, which puts the double tongue into practice. Those signals were actually written down by the uncle of Dauvernay, David Boulle, who wrote them down in 1805. There is another source that Dauvernay is using in his book, Altenburg. Johann Ernst Altenburg Versuch einer Anleitung zur heroisch musikalischen Trompeter- und Paukerkunst Published in 1795 So let's see what we can find here. On page 92 we find the chapter Die Zunge or Tang. Die deutschen und gelernten Trompeter haben besonders in diesem Feldstückblasen vor anderen einen großen Vorzug. Denn sie bedienen sich hierzu gewisser Manieren und Vorteile, wodurch das Feldstück und Prinzipalblasen sehr ausgeschmückt und verbessert wird. Sie heißen die Zunge oder der Zungenschlag und Haue. So what Altenburg is saying is that German trumpet players have advantages because they use special tongue techniques for the principal and signal playing. On the bottom of the page we find examples. Articulation of for the single is ridiridon or gidigidon. And for double is diridiridon or digidigidon.
But actually the most astonishing thing is Altenberg's notation. Basically Altenberg is saying that even if a rhythm is written with two sixteenth notes followed by an eighth note, it should be articulated with a triplet of sixteenth notes followed by an eighth note for the einfache Zunge. For the doppelte Zunge we use 30 second notes. It is important to know that Altenberg is suggesting this kind of articulation only for the principal register, so not for the clarino register. If we consider that Altenberg got most of his information from his father, who was a court trumpeter in Weissenfels in the first half of the 18th century, and we consider as well that the father-in-law of Johann Sebastian Bach, Wilkens, was as well a court trumpet player in Weissenfels, and Gottfried Reiche, the favorite Stadtpfeifer of Leipzig, from Weissenfels as well. So this would raise a question Especially since we find all the other ornament Altenberg is describing in Bach's music, namely the Haue and the überschlagende Haue. We can actually find a discrepancy between notation and execution of this articulation as well in Fröhlich. Vollständige theoretisch-praktische Musikschule by Josef Fröhlich, published in 1811. If we look at a section about articulation on the trumpet, we find similar information like in Altenburg. Of course, it is very well possible that Fröhlich knew Altenburg's method. Even though there are similarities to Altenburg, there is as well different information. His syllable use is not totally consistent with Altenburg and even more interesting, he gives musical examples on how to apply this tonguing on orchestral parts. It's even possible that Altenberg's impact was much wider than we think. In A New and Complete Preceptor for the Trumpet and Buglehorn by John Hyde, printed in 1799, we find the chapter Examples for Exercising the Tongue. Here John Hyde says, The German method of double tonguing is to imitate the sound of Gudagagong or Gudagudagong. The chief excellence of German trumpet players is their peculiar method of double tonguing, which has a very good effect in some particular pieces, but is not at all favorable to make a general good performer nor yet a pleasing accompaniment to songs, playing airs or any music that requires a certain sweet and firm tone in the upper part of the instrument, and should be only used by the performer who plays the third part, or principale, as they call it. There are certainly very similar elements in Altenberg's chapter about the tongue, and in John Hyde's preceptor. Our last stop in our travel through the centuries is the first half of the 17th century. Here the two sources we are going to look at are of course Bendinelli and Fantini. In the first chapter of Modo per imparare a sonare di tromba by Fantini, we find the Toccata di Basso, which are short exercises in the low register. And Fantini as well puts articulation syllables on the exercises. Fantini's articulation in the low register is binary. The typical example is which is what Altenberg would refer to as doppelter Zungenschlag.
A big difference to Altenberg is that Fantini suggests to use that articulation sometimes for the clarino register as well. The last place we're going to look at is Bendinelli, published in 1618. Every time in Bendinelli when a pattern of four eighth notes occurs, he gives just one word, lingua. which translates into long or zunge or tongue. Please share this video with other interested trumpet players, subscribe and give a like. See you next time.